Cheapo. Blimey, 2013 and I'm still not dead. I know, I can't believe it either. Anyway, time to look at some more stuff from Poundland and other such shops with similar names. And first up, our old friends at SignalX are helping make our phone music play louder with iPhone speaker. Amplify sound from the iPhone's built-in speaker. This is the 14th take of this introduction. I can't stop laughing at it. It's literally an ear trumpet that you used to see in sort of a drama sent in the 1920s that uh, old people would shove in their ear hole to amplify sound. Except it's supposed to amplify the sound from your super duper high tech phone and they've even made it look like an ear trumpet or something hanging off a gramophone. <laughs> Why? Can you at least pretend to make it look a bit futuristic in some manner? God, anyway. Easy to fit. Clips on in seconds. <laughs> Are they hoping you'll think there's some electronics involved? I don't know. Um, there's not much said other than designed for iPhone 344S, which is a pity I don't have any of those, but I'm hoping the one I do have will fit. Right. Inside. Oh dear. Oh, I've gone to the wrong end, haven't I? Oh, blimey. It's going from the side. Hacky, hacky, snippy, snippy, and ah, at last. You could also use it as a funnel, maybe. Yes. I don't know. Right, um, that looks like for a different type. I think this will be closest to the phone I have. Oh, I, I so want to run around a pub with this stuck in my ear, just going up to people and saying, What's that, Sonny? You'd probably get thrown out, but man, it would be amusing. Right, so here's a phone playing some music. Ready? Steady music. Right, rewind that, and here it is magically amplified. Stop! <laughs> Sorry, this the ridiculousness of what I'm doing hits me occasionally. Um, yeah, well, the good news is it is genuinely louder. The bad news is it makes it all sound tinny and shite and isn't that much louder to really worry about. If you do want to amplify the sound from your phone, get a pair of bloody speakers. They're only cheap and <laughs> they don't look like this. Look, it's Gandalf's hat. Right, next on the agenda of fun, how about... A terrifying mask of minor celebrity Holly Willoughby! Hooray! This is something I picked up for the um, that Christmas video I did for the uh, music-y song. Uh, oh, what was it called? I should remember, I had to listen to it like a million times. Um, You're the best thing about Christmas, that's it. But it was in a scene we ended up not using, because A, we didn't have the running time for it, and B, it didn't quite work on a humour level anyway. But you can now pretend you're Holly Willoughby when you rob a bank, which is always nice. Now, that's a very minor thing as compared to the next one, which I had to buy for the simple reason that, well, other than the fact that masks in Poundland are brilliant anyway, celebrity masks of somebody I had absolutely no idea who it was. I just didn't recognise them at all. The best guess I could come up with was, is it the bloke who plays Andy Sugden in Emmerdale, the soap opera? Answer, no. It's somebody else... Oh, no, I can't remember his name. <laughs> um, I genuinely can't remember that. Everybody in the comments will be going, it's so-and-so. It's somebody offered, like, one of these reality TV programmes about Essex or something that I haven't seen. But uh, you can now pretend you're a minor celebrity that nobody actually knows who you are. You may as well just wear your own face. I don't know. But the real king of these celebrity masks, this absolutely horrifying Bruce Forsyth mask. Look at his expression. Why couldn't you get him smiling or something? He looks sort of really serious and, like, basically, he's coming to dismember you. Also, what's that on his lip? There's, like, a, a little bit of yoghurt or something left. It's horrifying. Just stare into that for a few seconds, and now you will never fear anything again in your whole life. Unfortunately, if you were in a car, you may have weed yourself, but don't worry, because you can get replacement rear seat car mats in Poundland. Are you ready? Nothing can prepare you. Rear seat car mats, two-piece set, ideal for the back footwells. Mm-mm, 100% cotton pile, back mix fibre. What the hell does back mix fibre mean? Answer, nothing. 
Now, you may think I've stored these somewhere filthy. Nope, this is actually what they're like in the shop, including this weird, hairy... Well, I think it's actually a man-made fibre of some description. But basically, these things look like they were weaved together out of fluff from a tumble dryer and pubic hair, and then left somewhere filthy for a few months. Look at it! All this stuff! Honestly, this is what it's like in the shop. You can buy the most filthy mats imaginable. I mean, you're just looking at 50 pence a mat, aren't you? Two mats for a pound, and that's pretty good to keep your car clean. But do you really want... How... You're not keeping your car clean, you're making your car dirtier just by bringing them in. I would love to take this down to forensics and see exactly where all these fibres have come from. Well, on the plus side, they've got quite a strong backing. I said, oh man, there's a big lump of something in there. Oh, I don't want to touch these anymore. Ugh. Well, that was nice, wasn't it? Let's have something a bit more fun, shall we? How about Fantastic, our old friends from their jokes and gags range with their weird smiling lunatics. Six metal tricks. Can you untangle them? It's some sort of irritating puzzle, like a thing you'd get in a posh cracker. Go on then. So the idea is you've got to be able to untangle these things, have you? Well, let's have a think about it. That was pretty easy. Let's try another one. <clears throat> oh, look, this looks more um, difficult. How would that go? Would that go through there? Oh, no, look. Uh, you've got to properly twist this around. I think I actually know a really good way of doing this. Yep, a little bit wider. And I think, yep, there we are. Absolutely perfect. Untangled in seconds. Don't judge me, life's too fucking short. Anyway, what else have we got? How about an intelligent DIY model car? Right, if they were that intelligent, they probably wouldn't call an aircraft a car, for starters. I can only assume there's some sort of large um, amount of irony placed on the word intelligent there. 43-piece set, construct your own fantastic model. Ages 8+, plus, construct and play. Look, here's all the parts you're supposed to get that you can't read because of that thing. Have you noticed the small problem yet? If it was that bloody intelligent, probably their aircraft would have wings. Call me Mr. Wright, brother, but I can't help feeling that planes don't get very far if they haven't got any fricking wings. Look, it's just got little stubs. It wouldn't get anywhere. It's got a giant propeller, no wings and no tail. Oh, let's have a look inside. Do we have to? Spanner. Screwdriver. Instructions. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's really handy instructions. Um, massively oversimplified instructions, in fact. And a handful of small metal parts which almost certainly don't go together properly. And no, I'm not going to bloody make it. There's one thing I don't need in my life. It's an intelligent model car that's actually an aircraft that doesn't have any bloody wings. Good grief. 2013, this is the best they can offer. Anyway, little story for the next one. The next three items come from a shop called Pound World. Ooh. We don't have any of those local to me, so I'd never been in before. But recently, I stayed in a hotel which happened to be next door to a Pound World. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, due to these circumstances of me being there, I couldn't buy anything, so I couldn't carry it around with me, which was a pity, because I saw three really horrifying rubber toys. Most of the other stock was very similar to sort of Poundland stuff. However, by magical coincidence, somebody sent to the P.O. box exactly the three things I would have bought. I can only imagine they were psychic, or they follow me around everywhere. I'm going to go for the psychic one. Here's the first toy. Jokes and gags. Look, similar to Fantastic, but a different company. Finger Puppet. A fearsome set of gnashes with googly eyes. It's the trophy from a murderous psychopath. It's absolutely horrifying. Would you give this to your children? Answer, probably. But that's not the point. Ah, oh, it feels really horrible. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello, I betrayed the Sicilian Mafia, and look what happened to me! It's even got a tongue. A horrible, rubbery tongue. This is slightly freaking me out, actually, as unpleasant toys go. This is pretty high up, I would have said. There we are. One for any children who are fans of Dexter or similar programmes there. But don't worry, you can distract them from their nightmares with a dancing monkey! Dance, little monkey, dance! Is it just me, or does that sound a little bit creepy? Oh, look, you can pull the thing off his head in the package, I didn't realise. 
That was not very dancing, that was vibrating slightly in a package. Simply pull Monkey's cord and watch him dance around. Hmm. I'm not entirely sold on this idea, but... Oh, it's all sticky and weird. Ugh. 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 It's all... Ugh. It's just going to get filthy after about five seconds. Dance, Monkey, dance! They... Oh, here we are. Yes, he does kind of do... That's, that's a very weird concept of dancing. That's more like having some sort of horrifying neurological incident that you may never fully recover from. Oh, there we are. A little, little bit of waving in agony there. Thanks, dancing monkey, for making none of us ever want to dance again in case we don't survive. Also, look at his dead, vacant eyes, just as a little addendum for you there. Marvellous. But nothing beats the damaged packaging of Bulging Buddies. Watch me grow in size, says a tiger that's been run over by a truck and has a pipe up its arse. Blows up like a balloon, it says. Crazy inflatable balloon animals. What, literally a balloon? There are six animals in total. Elephant, tiger, frog, thing, hippo, and tiger. No, that must be a lion then. I see. I was going to buy the elephant myself, because the trunk makes more sense. Although, actually, think about it, it's funnier to have a tube stuck up its arse, I suppose. Why not collect them all? Oh, I can think of so many reasons. So, <clears throat> oh god, this one's quite sticky as well. You've got this thing. Morning. It's a tiger. It's very dead. Let's blow some air up its anus. And there we are. That, that's hours of fun for the whole family. <laughs> Who wants an inflatable tiger? It's like it's like something of deviant art. Deary me. Um, there we are. Instant tiger flatulence. What more could anybody ask for? What is the concept behind this toy? If anybody knows, please, for the love of Christ Almighty, keep it to yourself. OK. Time for something a little bit different. Currently online, you can buy something called a... Bar I think it's called a bag of crap. Um, which is a term that has been used before, but it's currently being used by these people for literally sending you a bag of crap if you send them money. There's like different grades. I think it's like £5, £10 and £20, and you pay for the crap and the postage, and they send you random items. They have sent me a £10 bag of crap. No, that's not the weight, that is the cost. And here is what I got for the magic £10 and postage that was spent. An M&M's scented candle, Nutty lemon. Fair enough. Um, let's have a sniff. It smells vaguely lemony, I suppose. I'm not so sure about the nutty bit. Let's light it. Yeah, that is quite lemony. I suppose I'm going to put that over there and leave it as a fire hazard. I would say it would throw out the uh, white balance on the camcorder. That seems to have happened considerably some time ago. Next up, a DVD copy of Milton Berle's Low Impact High Comedy Workout. Good old Milton Berle. I believe he's an American comedian who looks slightly older than the universe. Um, this is actually something that's in Poundland. I've seen it repeatedly, so we can guess where they got it from. Either Poundland or its suppliers. So, um, America's beloved Uncle Milty, Mr. Television, presents possibly the safest and most comprehensive senior exercise video available. So the main point of this is to give it to somebody fairly young as an insult. Understood. I can live with that. What's next? Bloody hell. The same thing in slightly different packaging. Moving swiftly on. Realistic security camera. It looks like a security camera, but isn't. Home shield security. Easy installation, no wiring, battery operated, realistic. Of course it's easy installation, no wiring. It's not real, is it? So basically this f it looks like a fake security camera. Oh, sorry, it looks like a real security camera. No, it doesn't. And flashes a little LED to confuse burglars and eviltons into thinking you're watching their every move. Oh man, it's so cheap and plastic. It doesn't just fall to bits if you actually put it anywhere. There's also a sort of weird clicking thing going on. Presumably that's how you turn the little light on and off. And look, fake lens, so people think they're being stared at. Hmm, not entirely convinced that would really keep anybody away from your valuables. I suppose it would, because they saw if you had something as cheap and shit as this, you've probably got nothing worth stealing in the house, so it makes sense. And next up, a test tube. The original shot in a tube. Alcohol, 15% by volume. Bloody hell. 
pineapple and coconut. Oh god, I don't like pineapple and I hate coconut. This is going to be good. Um, so they've sent me something massively alcoholic. It's 0.27 units of alcohol per tube. That's very kind of you. And uh, Oh, that's right, I thought the bloody security seal had gone. This is an alcoholic cocktail of water, sugar, flavourings, citric acid and potassium sorbate. Please drink responsibly. You wouldn't have to drink responsibly if you just read the instructions. It'll put you off for life. Go on then. The things I risk for YouTube. Let's have a sniff. Ooh. Oh dear. This kind of smells of plastic, actually. That will be the coconutty bit, I suppose. All right, I'll have a sip. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's very potent alcohol-wise. Um, tastes vaguely of coconut. Leaves a sort of plasticky aftertaste, no real hint of pineapple. I wouldn't be recommending that. I've got no idea where they got that from. They don't sell alcohol in Poundland or anything. Something else they don't sell in Poundland is Just Cool Bliss Tamarind Drink, which, if the can is anything to go by, is made entirely of poo. Um, ingredients, tamarind juice, sugar, salt water. I've never heard of a tamarind. I've certainly never seen one. Oh, dear. Oh, it's not fizzy. Or well, that was supposed to be fizzy, but it's gone off over the years. Actually, what is the best before date on this thing? I can't tell. It's the product of Thailand. That's all I can tell you. Well, you certainly don't get this in Poundland. Cheers. Mm. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh, that's horrible. Oh. Oh, it's got like a weird savoury taste to it. It's like a drink made out of rancid potatoes or something. Oh, get back to your tree, tamarind. Meanwhile, that's going to go down the sink. Oh, oh dear. And uh, the only slight worry is the last item is potentially worse. Big sheet. <laughs> Featuring what can only be described as a cartoon character shoveling astroturf into his gob. Pocket times... Oh, good, there's ten of them. I'm sure I'll get a lot of enjoyment out of them. All the writing is in a language I do not understand. And, well, the idea is you rip the packet open and either shovel it in your mouth, stick it down your mouth, or roll it up and shove. Basically, shoving it in your mouth is very popular. And something like a picture of a microwave and some writing down there. Product of Thailand. Well, that's good. Um, uh, what flavour is it? Ah, well, there's a picture of some chilies. So I'm guessing some sort of chilli flavouring. Oh, I can't open it. Uh, fortunately, I have these large scissors. Snippity, snippity. Right, open her up and, uh, oh, God. What is it, seaweed or something that's been um, desiccated and stuck coated with chilies? I really don't know what this is at all. If you do know the game, the name even, please do write it in the comments. If you know the game, write that as well. Um, say you've lost it or something. Oh, every time you... How did he roll this up? It just shatters. What are you trying to do? Perhaps it's 50 years out of date. Most food people send to me is. Yeah, well then. No, no, no. Yep, that's seaweed. Definitely seaweed. It tastes like uh, expired prawns. Um, no real hint of chilli. Just a really big, fishy, dodgy, prawny taste. Yeah, that's pretty unpleasant. Actually, I've got to say, um, that's not going to be on my Christmas list this year for uh, items to give people during the festive season to make them happy. Perhaps items to uh, get people the fuck out of my house if I don't want them here, maybe. Oh. oh, it's gummed up on the inside of my mouth. Oh dear. Right, that's enough of that. And hopefully enough of that for several months. That was Poundland Special. That was a bag of crap, box of crap, whatever it's called. Oh, I'll give you a link below. And I'm going to go rinse my mouth out with something quite caustic. <clears throat> Against my better judgement, I decided to try and build the intelligent model car aircraft anyway. Here's as far as I got before I got so frustrated with the lack of instructions which tells you to do things in the wrong order and other things that don't make sense, things that fall apart because the pieces aren't made and the little nuts don't fit into the bolts properly. Deep breaths. Basically, I'm not going to finish it, and it's never going to fly. But it never was, with wings that big.